Hi, uh, my name is Matthew Prince. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really honored to be here uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I actually grew up uh, in Park City, Utah, so this is a bit of a, a homecoming. And, uh, and secondly, we're huge fans of SALT at Cloudflare, and so uh, when the folks from SALT Stack contacted us and said, uh, invite us to come and talk about it, um, we thought we would and thought it would be a great story to share. Um, our mission at Cloudflare is to help build a better internet. And everyone in this room has, has used our network probably hundreds of times in the last 24 hours, likely without even knowing it. We have literally two million customers around the world that include everything from tiny little blogs that as far as we can tell no one has ever visited to some of the world's largest websites uh, and web applications and even large platforms like Salesforce uh, that use, use our network. Uh, if you look at the traffic across our network and aggregate it together, it rivals some of the largest uh, networks in the world. Uh, we see more page views than just about anyone else and have about 1.8 billion people pass through our network every single month, which is effectively the entire active internet uh, on, on our network. And if you, if you think about what it is that we're trying to do at Cloudflare, what we're trying to do is help make it so that all of the things that you used to have to buy and put at the top of your rack, we can now deliver as a service, whether that's load balancing, WAN optimization, DDoS mitigation, any of those types of services we can deploy across our network. Or put another way, where the data center of yesterday was defined by the four walls of the building. Uh, today, as networks are becoming more complicated and you have to have control across a number of different services, Cloudflare is providing that or you know, aping on Salesforce a little. What we think of is Cloudflare is replacing hardware uh, that you used to have to install. To make that happen, we run you know, a giant network. We, uh, we actually ship servers uh, to all of these locations around the world in order to make that happen. And operations is really the heart and soul of what we do at Cloudflare. Most of the locations that we're in today, and we actually turned up Dusseldorf uh, this morning, most of the locations we're in today look like something out of a scene from 24. You know, these are tier four data centers. Uh, you have to, to get into, for example, the cage in our San Jose data center. You have to pass through six biometric scanners uh, before you actually even get to the servers themselves. And, and that, that's an environment that actually makes the job of running a network like ours a lot easier. Um, unfortunately, that environment isn't necessarily going to be what we have to work with in the future. Um, if you look at where we're going next, and these are all the data centers that we have planned uh, to turn up by the end of Q2, there aren't many tier four data centers in these locations. Um, this is, this, these are significant, I mean, Auckland, Melbourne may be okay. Almost everything else on this list, um, especially that big chunk of, of red up there, uh, create some really unique challenges when we're building this. And in order to make Cloudflare work, we need to make sure that when we're deploying equipment and we're putting that equipment in any of these locations that we know exactly what software is running on that equipment and that we can secure that hardware even if it's running in a place where we don't necessarily trust it. Um, the data centers, we actually sent some people to visit the uh, two facilities that we're going into in Kenya and um, they, they definitely aren't, and they're air conditioned with like those air conditioners that you see in in uh, like European homes, um, it's, it's definitely a very different thing than an Equinix facility. Um, and yet, you know, we need to be as close as possible to the users of the internet, and so we need to go into all of these, these places around the world. And to do that, it's really important that we have a way of, again, ensuring that the software that we're running on this equipment is, is secure, is verified as ours, and that we have consistency across that. And that's really when we were looking for solutions for that, that's where we, we came across SALT and where we've been using it uh, across our entire platform. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But in order to get there, you have to understand a little bit about what our stack looks like and, uh, and, and how we actually deploy it. And we, we actually keep things extremely simple at Cloudflare. Um, we have a very, very simple stack where when we're deploying equipment, there are really only three components that we're putting out in the world. We're putting out routers, 
switches and servers. And a data center for us is just a combination of those things. There's nothing else that's going into these various facilities. What that then means is that simplicity, uh, we have to ensure that those servers are running again exactly what it is uh, that we use. And so we actually use a company called Quanta to build servers. This is a picture of the uh, sort of generation six servers that we're deploying. It's a 2U server with actually four uh, individual servers that go in it that shares two power supplies, and then each of those are discrete uh, equip equipment. And so this is what we're sending out across across the world, and, and this is built for someone like, like Quanta. And, and this is actually what a server looks like, but when we think of servers, this is what we think of them looking like, right? We think of them being almost like they're a mobile phone. Um, and if you think about it, um, you, you know, the mobile phone providers have, have essentially taken all of the equipment of a server and they've squished it down and they've sent it, put it into people's pockets. And that, that gives us hope uh, if they can do that and they can lock down those phones to ensure that only the software that they've authorized runs on those phones, then that gives us hope that we can put equipment in particular hostile environments and make it so that it's secure and we can ensure that it's running there. Again, imagine that we're putting equipment inside mainland China and we're concerned that for whatever reason the software that might be on that, that box wasn't something that was ours. What Apple is, and Google have demonstrated is you can actually build hardware in such a way that you can send it into an incredibly hostile environment and actually keep it fairly secure and keep it actually limited down and control what software is running on it. So when we think of the model for what our servers look like, it's not necessarily you know, a box that we're going to be able to lock behind a whole bunch of biometric scanners and ensure is never going to change. Instead, we think of it more like being an iPhone phone, where we're sending it out into a hostile environment, and then we have to ensure that no matter what, no matter who has access to it, that we can have complete control over what it is that's running on that server. And so to do that, um, we started using SALT uh, very specifically at, at Cloudflare. And so SALT fundamentally maintains a high state of what should be running on any machine that's out there. It prevents us from having to log on to those machines and have different configuration files on every one of the different pieces of equipment which is running across our network. What we can then do is actually use secure uh, UFEI technology, which you know, was originally just made to help ensure that people weren't pirating music or stealing illegal versions of, of software. We, kind of like what we're using it for instead, which is to ensure that when a, when a server boots from, from the, from the chipset up, every single piece of software is actually signed and tied to a TPM chip, which is loaded on each and every one of those, those, uh, those pieces of equipment. And if we don't have that valid signature, if that software doesn't have that valid signature, then it actually won't boot on there. And we've had to work actually with the kernel developers and with a, a lot of the different OS teams in order to take this technology and actually put it on this different server equipment. Once we have that, though, we have this really powerful way of actually ensuring that the software which is running on each of these machines is our actual software. So we can take the actual salt keys that tie back to the salt master and store those on the TPM chip as well so that when we actually go to retrieve a new image of whatever is supposed to be running on that or we use container technology, so a container which is containing whatever it is that is running on that server, then, then we know for sure that not only are we getting that from an authoritative source, but we know that that's going to be exactly the same software that's running on every single other server, the thousands and thousands of servers that make up Cloudflare's network. That Salt Master is fundamentally the control panel then for all of our equipment, which means that we can remove the ability for individual developers to have to log into those machines and actually change things by hand. Instead, we make a change to the Salt Master, which is running in one location, and then that change can get pushed out to our entire network and verified not only that it's consistent across every one of those servers, but that it's us who pushed that change, us that created that software, and us that's actually authorizing that software to run on those machines. Again, if you think of our challenge as how do we put these servers in increasingly untrustworthy locations where we don't have all of the security of, of, a, of you know, the, uh, the, the various you know, Equinix-like biometric scans to get in, how do we do that, ensure that we have the stability and ensure that we can uh, trust whatever software is running on that? SALT provides an absolutely critical foundational tool for us. 
The other piece which is incredibly important for us is that it means that because we're using salt, we can have a consistent environment between where our developers are developing in their, in their development environments, the staging environment that we're then pushing code to where we're running our tests and making sure it works, and then the actual production environment. And having that consistency just saves so much time for our development teams as we're trying to make sure that when we're pushing out a change and we're pushing out a test, that not only are we not breaking things, but that we're making the lives of our developers that much easier. Before we had salt, we didn't have a way of ensuring that simple consistency across it. Today, because of salt, when a new developer starts at Cloudflare in their first day, they have a full production environment on their, on their laptop and they can start writing code immediately, which has been a huge win for us. One of, you know, a, a case study of, of one of the ways that this has been helpful to us was to look at how we've responded to various threats or vulnerabilities that come out over time. And you know, we run in front of such an enormous percentage of the internet, where more than 5% of all internet requests flow through our network on a daily basis, that when there is a vulnerability, it's critical that we respond, and we respond extremely quickly. And so Shellshock, one of the vulnerabilities that came out recently is, it, it didn't get the same attention as Heartbleed, but boy, it's, it's probably one of the worst vulnerabilities that's, uh, then, that's been out in, in the world. And one of the things we needed to do was make sure that we didn't have vulnerable versions of Bash running across our network and that we could then, that that would be uh, exploitable in one way or another. Because again, if you can exploit our network, that not only affects a whole bunch of customers, but you've got access to many terabits of capacity which could, uh, could be used to create all kinds of problems. And so when Shellshock happened, the very first thing, as soon as we got disclosure, we got disclosure a little bit before uh, the rest of the world, um, we were able to create a simple salt state file that, that showed us exactly what what versions of Bash should be running across our network, take that and then push it out to our entire network so that it was deployed not, not, in, not in days, not in weeks, not, not in you know, long cycle times, but we could deploy it within minutes of getting that actual first disclosure. And so because of that, as we get vulnerability reports and as those reports are shared with us, again, oftentimes before they're shared with the public, what it means is that we can virtually patch the internet in real time, making it so that our production environment is as secure and as stable as possible. That updated version, again, gets pushed out to our entire network with a single command, and because we've used Salt across that network and bought into it not only on our development and, and staging environments, but in the production environments as well, that means that we can very quickly and efficiently roll out new code. And so when we think about how we're releasing code, even though, again, we're, we, we're a high availability service, we're doing multiple releases a day to make updates, to have changes to take advantage of, you know, both performance improvements that we can make, but then also when we see a, a new vulnerability that comes out that we can respond to it immediately. Salt empowers us to do that, and that's why it's such a critical portion of our stack. So, you know, we're huge fans of Salt. Um, we're, we're obviously hiring like crazy uh, right now, so if this sort of stuff sounds exciting, happy to find me. I'm here for the rest of the day. Happy to talk more about what it is that we're doing uh, with Salt on our network, what it is that you can do to enable Salt and make uh, to enable salt across your network in order to make it more effective. But as we go forward, we're not only contributing back to the community, giving back a bunch of the technology that we've used to, to secure our own systems, but we really appreciate how the community is contributing to the salt, uh, to salt. And, and you can know that if you're a contributor to salt, that your technology is helping power a better internet today. So thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for you being contributing to salt and appreciate, uh, appreciate the time. Appreciate it, thanks.